Hi there, hi, good afternoon everyone. This is Liz Davis. I am a nutritionist and I specialize in digestive health for busy women. So I help busy women fix their IBS, bloating, painful digestion, heartburn, and any kind of associated hormone problems, menopause, perimenopause, painful periods, etc. Um, chronic fatigue, all these kind of things can at least in part usually be traced back to some kind of imbalance going on in your gut. So useful to address that factor. So inflammation is a big thing that we would be looking at in any of those situations. So I'm just gonna do a quick rundown all about inflammation, um, what kind of signs to look for to see if you're affected, and then four quick tweaks you can make to your diet to try and help get things under control again. So what is inflammation then? Surely we need inflammation sometimes. Yes, we do. We need inflammation um, in acute situations. So for example, if you cut yourself, your body will mobilize lots of immune cells to that area and inflammation will be a part of that healing process. Um, if you have an insect bite or you're affected by a cold, so you've got a sore throat, all those kind of examples are acute inflammation. So your body will create the inflammation to help you heal. It will then be over um, within a few days, it will pass and you won't think about it again. So the problem is when we have chronic inflammation going on. So chronic inflammation um, is widely thought to be the root cause of all disease. I don't know if it is the root cause of all disease, but it certainly plays a part in a lot of situations. Um, so what would the signs of chronic inflammation be? So if you are feeling tired a lot of the time, um, if you have um, IBS symptoms, that when we test, we can often see that there is a degree of inflammation going on. It's not as bad as if you had something like colitis or Crohn's. And if you're someone who suffers with that kind of thing, you'll know all about chronic inflammation you will need to take medications to keep that under control. Um, but there are a lot less pronounced situations. So if you have stuff like eczema or um, chronic sinusitis, for example, also rheumatoid arthritis, those are all examples of chronic inflammation. So um, when you have an imbalance in your gut bacteria, so for example, you have too much bad bacteria, or bad bacteria, not so desirable bacteria, um, and not enough beneficial bacteria, this can cause um, inflammation to happen. And this is quite often what happens in IBS sort of situations. It can also be down to um, food intolerances or allergies um, or sensitivities. Stress is a huge trigger for inflammation. Um, toxins from the environment and too much processed food, sugar, too much caffeine, dehydration, things like that. They can all be problematic for um, inflammation and driving inflammation up. So what do you need to do then? Well, basically here are four quick tips that you can start to do right away if you want to work on bringing those inflammation levels down. So really important is to reduce your level of omega-6 fats. So omega-6 fats are, um, we need a degree of them. We don't want too much though. And we all tend to consume too much because it's just found everywhere. Um, it's in a lot of cooking oils, um, grain kind of foods, processed foods, etc. So we really need to work on bringing those down and then increasing our level of omega-3 fats. So um, basically you do need a moderate amount of omega-6, but the ratio is way out. We all tend to eat far too much of that. And then the omega-6 is highly inflammatory. So if you're using stuff like vegetable oil for cooking, sunflower oil for cooking, um, try and switch those out for less inflammatory versions such as olive oil or um, coconut oil, that will help you a lot. So drink red wine occasionally. So if you're someone who already drinks then switching out um, your usual drink for a good quality red wine, you may find that very helpful. It's highly anti-inflammatory. So it's got quercetin in it. It's got resveratrol. Those are really powerful anti-inflammatory substances. So I wouldn't recommend starting to drink red wine if you don't already drink, but certainly if you switch your regular drink out for a good quality red wine now and again, that's gonna really help you. If you're not keen on starting to drink wine or drinking wine, you can find quercetin in 
green tea, blueberries, kale, etc. So there are other sources which you can add um, without having you know any alcohol going on. So the next one, three, is omega-3 fatty acids. So omega-3 fatty acids are what you find in oily fish. That's what we need to be consuming to balance out all this omega-6 that we're eating. So if you're not keen on fish, um, if you're not eating fish two or three times a week, then absolutely do um, supplement with this. It's highly anti-inflammatory and a really useful thing to be getting on board with. And lastly, turmeric is a superstar when it comes to um, fighting inflammation. It's highly, highly anti-inflammatory. You can supplement it. So if you've got an con inflammatory condition which is really starting to bo bother you, then absolutely supplement it. And um, if even if you don't, it's really handy to you know just add a sprinkle to your food when it's cooking. So if you're cooking curries or chilies or something, or you can just add it into rice when it's cooking, really helpful. Um, super anti-inflammatory. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. Um, if you would like to speak to me, then do use the link in the comments below to book into my diary. Um, we can have a quick chat about how to um, progress with your situation. And also um, there's a link below to some recipes as well, some gut healing recipes if you'd find that useful. Um, and do like and share if you did find this useful. Okay, I shall see you next time. Bye.